Well, we meet again. How y'all doing? <laughs> Good to see you guys. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> okay, we are now joined by the uh, Blue Devils of Duke University, Coach uh, John Shire. Student athletes will be uh, Jeremy Roach, Tyrese Proctor, and Kyle Filipowski. Again, the student athletes will be dismissed at 310 to report to uh, breakouts, and we'll keep Coach here for the duration. Let's go straight to questions. Who wants to go first? Okay, I'm starting to think we had a bashful group today. All right, here on the left side, on the aisle. Yes, uh, Rob McLean for Inside Pack Sports. Obviously playing a familiar opponent, you don't have the – it's kind of a different – you don't maybe need to scout as much. How is the approach for this different than maybe it would be if it was an unfamiliar team? And that's for everyone. I think the approach is the same, I mean, for every team. Um, just a tournament, you got to lock in. Uh, it's a quick turnaround. Um, you want to make sure you're on top of your game. Uh, just with the scout, um, the the play call. I mean, just with even us, just watching that game back, um, just making, just finding finding stuff that we did wrong, finding stuff that we did right. Um, but I think just focusing on ourselves is the biggest thing uh, going to this game. Um, NC State's a great opponent. Um, they're playing their best basketball right now. They won eight in a row, so uh, they're here for a reason. So we just got to um, go out there and compete. Yeah, I, I'd agree with Jerm. Um, not changing the scout. It's good that we, we got two games under our belt against them um, at a neutral site and at, at away at, at NC State. So I think just getting familiar with, with how they play and um, you know DJ down low and how they have sort of two different teams when he goes out and, and when he's in. So uh, I think it's, it's been really good of how we've, how we've gotten to play them twice um, and we get to play them a third time now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's great having that familiar, familiarity with them um, and and already having a sense of, of, of their style. But, yeah, just, you know, we're doing a great job with, with how things have been going lately. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing and, and uh, keep doing what we've been doing. You said everybody. Do you want Coach to respond to that as well? Okay. Well, it's unique, obviously, the fact you've played them twice in the last month. Um, but it's the same preparation for us as a staff last night, watching film, watching our games back against them. Um, clearly, you don't have to get familiar where it's a new opponent, you know, because for me, I'm always, whoever the first game is, I'm all the way in. The staff is getting ahead. Um, so you're very familiar, but they're famili familiar with us, too. So it's unique, but the preparation is still the same for us. Okay, here on the left, toward the front. Yeah, uh, this is for Kyle. What's the biggest key to limiting DJ Burns in the post, as well as Mohamed Diara, who's really been a force on the glass in the last couple of games for State? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for, you know, it, it's, it's not just myself. This, it's going to be a whole team effort on the defensive end with, with controlling uh, DJ and, and limiting Diara's rebounding as well so it's just it's, it's going to be a whole team effort um just sticking to the game plan you know listening to to what the coaches have to say because you know we, we've been doing this for for a long time now and uh you know we have all the trust in in, in each other and um it's just going to be that type of game let's move toward the back now on the aisle um, I'm Adam Teicher from ESPN and this question's for John just curious what changes you've seen in NC State since you played him at their place late in the regular season? Well, uh, one, they, they continue to get better and better. You know, I think you can see their, their confidence and their togetherness has continued to grow. Uh, they're a really good defensive team. Uh, they're, they're, they become very disruptive. They've always been disruptive, but I think even more so in the half court, creating turnovers. Uh, they've been a better rebounding team. And then offensively, I think the, the, the biggest thing that you've seen is just the connectivity. You know, the, uh, Horn is a dangerous player anytime he steps on the floor, his ability to shoot from beyond the three. Uh, but really, everybody's playing their best basketball. I can go down the list. And, uh, you know, it's, you're, uh, they're much different than the, second time we than the first time we played them. And I think they're even better than the last time we played them. 
uh, at the ACC tournament because you, you, your confidence grows through your experience on the court. And when you win the ACC championship the way they did, five games in five days, and then win three games in the tournament, uh, really in convincing fashion. Obviously, they had the one overtime game, uh, but uh, I've been very impressed watching them on film. Okay, now we'll stay on the left, up front. John, Wendell Bardhouse from Learfield Sports. Um, considering the team has gotten to this point, is there any way of maybe explaining any differences or similarities this team has to maybe some past Duke teams you've been around as a player and, the co and a coach just overall season? Uh, there, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely there's some similarities between other teams. I, I think this team is unique with how they've done it, uh, especially the fact you consider where we are in college basketball in 2024 and the, the, the fact that these guys, uh, you know, we didn't have any transfers this season. You know, we are younger. Uh, and they've just continued to double down on the belief they have in each other. And ultimately, the tournament's about competing. You know, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And the teams, I've been fortunate to be on as a player or be a coach, uh, be on staff with. Uh, the teams I've done the best have just competed the best in the tournament when it matters most. And these guys have stepped up to that challenge. Uh, they've never been a group that makes excuses, which is why I think they've gone better the last two seasons, they've gotten better through the course of the year. They played their best basketball at the end. Uh, last year was the same way, and then this year uh, has been the same. And it's a credit to having the right people and having the right guys. Reminder, we only have the student athletes for about 10 more minutes before they go to breakouts. So if you have questions, you might want to direct them to them here on the right. Matt Giles, Blue Devil Country, and this is for any of you guys. Um, you, this, as a unit, y'all have really developed a strong personality, maybe a stronger personality and charisma than a lot of recent Duke teams. Maybe it kind of reminds me of maybe comparable to the 2019 team or something with Zion and them. Um, but how much do y'all credit Jared McCain for that and his, from his TikTok dances to his <laughs> everything to really get y'all maybe out of your uh, element a little bit, but grow in personality wise? Well, I think that's just him with the TikToks. I ain't really been in too many. <laughs> I ain't really been in too many TikToks, but uh, I wasn't. Uh, yeah, my I wasn't one last night, but uh, <laughs> that was literally my, last night. Nah, but that, was, that was my that was my only one. But uh, just his growth throughout the season. I mean, he started off kind of. I mean, as a freshman, you got to go. You got to go through those, those trials and tribulations. And then Tyrese <clears> goes down, and um, he had to step up. Him and Caleb had to step up, and then kind of had to grow grow up fast. Um, in the, in the Baylor game, I think that's really when he kind of took his stride and um, and just played himself. And I, I know his capabilities. I mean, we all know what Jared can do. Um, and he's he's just been doing whatever it takes to win. I mean, he's had four or five games where he has he's had ten rebounds in the game, and uh, he just plays he just plays the win. And that's just someone you want as a freshman. And he's always has that positive energy and just keeps that keeps keeps our spirits up too. So um, he's just a joy to be around. Yeah, I think. I think his energy and confidence spreads throughout the team um, through practice, through games. He puts so much work in. Um, it, it, it reflects on court uh, with his performances. And, you know, we all have so much confidence in him. Uh, he has so much confidence in himself. And uh, in terms of personality and stuff, I feel like, you know, just his energy, um, I mean, all around campus, it just brings all of us up, even if, you know, he's not having the best shooting night or, or he's not playing playing the best. I think that's sort of where he's improved this season, just, you know, playing for each, for all of us and, and um, letting the game come to him instead of, you know, trying to force it. Kyle, you want to try that as well? Yeah, I mean, just backing up what they were saying, Jared, Jared's one of one. And uh, even when he's having a bad day or a bad game, you won't know it because he's just so uplifting and, and, and positive um, and, you know, it's really great to have on this team because it, like they said it, it, it reflects on us as well and, and it, it helps us have each other's backs through, through the tough times too. We'll come back for questions here in the room. Let's take a call from Zoom. Yes, we have a call from Patrick. Patrick, if you would unmute yourself and state your name and affiliation and then your question, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, my name is Patrick Waring from the NBS Sports Hour. My question is for Jeremy. 
Jeremy, uh, of course, being from the DMV, I just wanted to kind of ask you, I mean, obviously you've experienced success at this level already, but just can you kind of talk about how being from the area has prepared you uh, for moments like this? Uh, well, it's the best area in the country for basketball. We just got to throw that out there right now. I don't care what anybody says, West Coast, New York, New Jersey. Um, DMV has the best <clears throat> the best basketball in the country. Um, I think Coach Shire would, think, would, would, would say that, too, with his recruitment, too. Well, we keep going back there, so something, <laughs> with his recruitment you know, something too. about it. Um, but I just I just think the, the, the competitive edge and just – um, the leagues, the leagues like the high school leagues that, that we come from, the WCAC, the IAC, um, all the Catholic leagues around, I mean, even even the public school leagues, like the DC um, public school leagues, I mean, they just prepare you for these moments. Um, you're always playing in front of big crowds and people talking to you, talking crazy, and um, it just it just keeps that competitive spirit. And uh, I think that's where, it, where I get my competitive edge from, but just, um, just always playing with great players too, um, just competing against great players. Uh, just kind of prepare me for these moments. Okay, you're on the right, kind of in the middle. Uh, Chris Vanini from The Athletic for Jeremy and John. Uh, a couple of years ago, you played UNC in the Final Four, now NC State in the Elite Eight, the biggest game in this rivalry. What can you say about the rivalry with NC State and what it means to Duke? Jeremy. Uh, well, it's a huge rivalry. Um, 25 minutes from, from Durham, 20 minutes from Durham. Um, Played them, played them twice. I mean, the, the tri, that that tri-state, that 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 UNC Duke, uh, UNC is always a great matchup. Um, just playing them, um, it's always a competitive matchup, um, and it's just fun playing against those guys. Uh, we compete, we compete at a high level, um, but we also have the respect for for one another too. Well, I would just say it's you know it's uh, growing up as a player and as as a coach at Duke, you learn very quickly it's the best area in in, in college to, for basketball. You know, when you have really the, the triangle, but then you had in Wake Forest, you know, all within an hour of each other. I think that's, uh, it's unique. And uh, so for me, it's, it's it hasn't gone into my mind at all about the fact of a rivalry, about, you know, the, the battles in past years against NC State. I think it's just the respect level. You know, we've always had big time games against them, uh, very competitive. Uh, they've had their style of playing, so have we. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a big-time battle regardless of whether it's in the NCAA tournament, ACC tournament, regular season game. There's, there's always a lot at stake, and uh, this is no exception. Toward the front on the left. Tyrese Wendell Barnhouse from Learfield Sports. Um, coming from Australia, you obviously knew about Duke, but when you got here to Durham, did anybody talk to you about how, the you know, Everybody hates Duke. I mean, you play outside of Cameron, and you guys are the team everybody wants to see lose. <laughs> yeah. Did any, anybody like Jeremy or anybody say, hey, look, <laughs> get ready for this because it's, it's really kind of tough? Yeah. Um, I mean, I knew about Duke, uh, obviously getting recruited and stuff like that, but uh, I didn't realize how, how hated we were until I actually got here and experienced it firsthand. Um, you know, guys prepared me for it and stuff like that, but – I mean, going through it firsthand, I mean, you see it for yourself, and uh, I think it just gives us an edge and, and gives us, you know, that edge throughout the whole season and um, allows us to play play our best possible. We have about five minutes remaining in our time frame with our student athletes here on the left now. Um, Runjan Jindal, Duke Chronicle. This is for any of the players, but um, you mentioned after the last time you played NC State, you held a players only meeting. Um, afterwards, could you just talk about kind of the focus of that meeting and how much it helped you guys reset for for this tournament? How about starting with Kyle? Uh, we're not really gonna talk about that meeting like that as players only, but I mean it was definitely a good meeting. Definitely a lot of uh, a lot of words, a meaningful words that came out of that meeting. Um, we don't want to get into all that, but uh, definitely, definitely just kind of just re-energized, re-energized us, uh, refocused <coughs> us, and uh, just got us to where got us to where we are, where, where we're at right now. Sounds good. Next question will be here on the right, extreme right. Hey, Glenn Gilbo from Outkick.com. Uh, Kyle and the other players, if, if you have uh, an opinion, um, do you get to watch much of the women's game? And what do you think of the women's game, particularly in the last year or so as it's on TV more and maybe some of the personalities? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think 
Uh, it's been great what's happening to, to women's basketball for, for college and just them getting more of the, the popularity and, and people giving them the respect they deserve. It's, it's been great for basketball in general and just, you know, they're, they're, they're playing the game they love just like we are and they deserve just as much as we do. Um, so just seeing that finally start happening and them getting more credit is, is great to see. Tyrese? Yeah, I mean, I've loved it. I've always watched, uh, having a young assist, I've always watched women's basketball. Um, and, you know, just just watching even last year, the, the uplift that the Final Four and stuff like that brought. Um, I think they're finally, you know, getting the stage that they deserve and, and the respect that they deserve. Um, and shout out Duke Women's Basketball. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Seven o'clock. Watch. You come. <laughs> um, I mean, it's always a joy watching uh, women's basketball. Um, <clears throat> I grew up watching my sister play, um, my cousins play, and then now I'm going to every Duke Duke women's game. Um, we're all we're always supporting. Um, I think it's just like you said, they're getting the respect that they deserve. Um, they they put our they put their shoes on and their their jerseys on the same way we do. So uh, I feel like they should. Um, they should get. They should pretty much get everything that we that we get, um, and it's just a joy watching. I mean, the stars that they have. I mean, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark. We go. We go to Duke team. Reagan T. Like um, Ashley. Like it's it's like the list goes on. I mean, they, they just got they got a lot of great players, and I think they they should definitely get the recognition that they deserve. Um, yeah. Approaching the end of our session with our student athletes. Anything else for the three guys? Okay, here on the front. Matt Giles, Blue Devil Country, for any of you. Um, talk about the support the Brotherhood has given you here, especially since last night. I mean, a bunch of them were in the stands, but then countless former players on Twitter. Uh, have y'all had a chance, do y'all have time to interact with any of them, or just talk about the sport in general, and have, you, have any of them reached out to you personally? Why don't we start with Jeremy? Yeah. Um, I think for me, just the support, like you said, the support that they give uh, to us on a daily basis, whether, I mean, Duke is such a prominent uh, school. I mean, you get a lot of hate and stuff like that, but they're always the ones saying like, yo, keep going, keep going, like we got your back and stuff like that. So just knowing that we have the support of the older guys who came before us, um, it means a lot. Um, it makes us want to play that much harder. But I mean, guys like P, like Mark, uh, Trev, Wendell, like Matt Hurt, like those guys, I still keep in contact with them. like on a daily basis. So uh, their support means so much to me, um, just the confidence that they that they give to me. Um, and then guys like Quinn and Emil Jefferson, who's been, who's been here too. So um, just there's those, there's those guys, I mean, they, they, they mean so much to us. Uh, and the support that they give us, it means a lot. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just the support. And you know, that's why we came to Duke. Um, you know, it's outside of basketball and uh, the networks and relationships that you form um, while being at Duke at K Academy and, and events like that. Um, something that you can, you know, cherish forever and, and keep in contact and, um, you know, everyone's supporting, everyone's, you know, always reaching out, um, telling us what they see. Um, I mean, it's just great because, you know, we trust one another. They've all been through the same road we, we're going through and, um, you know, some advice uh, will, never, will never hurt. Yeah, I mean, like they said, uh, they, they've gone through this experience before, and it's great to get feedback and support from them as well. Uh, just just them cheering us on because, you know, there are so many people rooting against us. So just, you know, that, that brotherhood uh, connection does run deep, and it's, it's great to have their support. Okay, it's 310. We will dismiss Jeremy, Tyrese, and Kyle to go to breakouts, which for media is right up the steps yep. and to the left. And that will go for 15 minutes. Thanks for coming, guys, and uh, good luck tomorrow. We'll see you then. Let's go to questions now for Coach Shire. And we have several hands up, and where are we going first? Let's go on the right side over here, Coach, by the curtain. Kyle Boone with CBS Sports. Uh, John, you guys have obviously done a really good job recruiting, particularly if you look at the recruiting rankings, you get five stars, McDonald's All-Americans. Uh, but this team is obviously more than just talent. It seems like they've really clicked. They like each other. Uh, maybe that's a little bit of social media that you see from, from them dancing. Uh, how much do you consider personalities and, and kind of team fit when you're recruiting for Duke? Because you could just kind of go down the line and say, 
I want this five star, I want this five star. How do you kind of consider that as you're trying to build a team? It's, uh, it's as important as anything. Just the, the personality, the makeup from a character standpoint, obviously, you know, off the court, but then the, the competitiveness you have to have to succeed at Duke and the, the, the mental toughness uh, feel it has to be at a high level. And so for us, you know, I, I learned very quickly coming on staff, you have to say no more than you say yes. And uh, that's uh, uh, being a foreign player, you know, I feel even a, a greater responsibility for the guys that we bring in. Uh, talent's never going to be enough. You have to have chemistry. You have to have uh, guys that want to unpack their bags and be all in for the time that they're at Duke, whether it's a year, whether it's four years. And uh, so I'm fortunate, you know, when we recruit too, it's, it's full disclosure. And so we talk about who else we're recruiting. Uh, we put it all, uh, all out on the table because all of a sudden if there's surprises along the way or you don't have the, the buy-in that you need to from the beginning. And it gets harder to do that when you don't know who's coming back or who's, you know, leaving and all that. But we still do our best to be transparent and here's what the way it looks now. And I think that that's created a, a great togetherness for our group just to stick with it and stay together. Okay, Coach, let's go in the back now in front of the TV camera. Hey, John, Luke Tucock from the News and Observer. Um, I know you said that there's not a lot different about playing state here as opposed to other times. But you guys did go through this two years ago. You did play Carolina in the Final Four. That is different. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different venue. It's all a different environment. What can you and, to a certain extent, Jeremy, sort of take from that experience of playing a team you know so well, there's such deep feelings on the national stage? What, what can you and, and him kind of take into Sunday that you learned from that? Well, uh, I'll say two things with that. One, it, it, it feels different to me because there's not such a long time in between, you know, and, and two years ago there was. So there's a lot more you can think about. There's a lot more that can happen in between the two games that you play. I'm talking about the, the game versus Arkansas in the Elite Eight. So then when we play North Carolina this, this year, you know, so then the second thing for me um, is just focusing on the prep. And just focusing on what you can control, it does. It, it ultimately does not matter that it's a team that we've played twice. You know, it matters. Are you getting back in transition defense? Are you blocking out? Are you? Am I preparing the way that I need to? Like that. That's been my whole focus. And uh, um, I mentioned earlier the the the, the thing that makes it a little bit different. We just played these guys twice. <laughs> they just played us twice. And so it's not like there's a lot of secrets you know, out there between either one of us. I think it's pretty clear both ways. You just have to execute it, have to follow the game plan. And, you know, you mentioned what can Jeremy and I do. I think it's a setting the tone for the prep and the edge you have to have. Okay, in the back on the right. Nathan Geese, USA Today Network. Uh, with conference expansion, you guys aren't seeing teams like NC State nearly as much as you had in the past. You can, ACC is getting kind of a facelift after this year. Is there any significance to you to have this kind of game, this kind of setting with two traditional ACC powers playing with these kind of stakes? Haven't thought about that as much. Um, but, you know, in a world of uncertainty, and not knowing what the, the future holds, uh, you know, you, you want to take advantage of every opportunity you have. And, uh, you know, look, NC State, I've had as many battles against those guys as a player, as a coach, almost against anybody. And so the respect levels there, uh, the history between the two programs is clear to me. Uh, but you have to put all that aside. You know, you really do. You have to put it all aside and focus on what you need to do to win an Elite Eight game. Uh, but uh, you want to take advantage of the opportunity when you're here. Media listening in on Zoom, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Coach, now on the back on the left side. All right, Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. And, uh, you know, your opponent last night with Houston, you know, is a team that's been one in the rankings for most of the season. And the team you're about to play is one that's sort of playing with house money and that, you know, you're not even supposed to be here. And it's almost a little bit like UNC two years ago when they made that run to the championship game. You know, do you 
prepare your team differently when you are facing a team that sort of has these, you know, loose team of destiny vibes to it compared to a team that, you know, maybe has a little bit more expectations and pressure about, you know, where they expect to end the tournament? You know, I, I think it's important for our team to understand context and uh, not just the, the, the X and O scouting report of a team, but also the, the mental makeup and where they're at. Uh, the, the thing I'll say uh, about NC State is they went into yesterday's game, every game they've played, you know, including ours when we played them in the ACC tournament, believing they're supposed to win. Like, they're, they're, there's no surprises with them. Like, they're, they're not leaving the, the, the court celebrating. They believe they're supposed to win. And so, to me, I know it's unorthodox how they've gone here, winning the ACC tournament that way, but you're playing a team right now that is as confident as anybody will play, including Houston. So, uh, although it's different how they've gone here, to me it's the same approach. And doesn't matter if you're favored, doesn't matter what you're seated. Uh, what matters is what you can, what you control when the ball goes up. And, and the the further the season's gone along for us, the more that's been our talk, and the more that's what we focused on. And uh, we're not going to stop doing that now for this game. Inside aisle now. Noah Fleischman from the Wolfpack. You know, you talked about playing them twice, and you saw them at, the, I guess, their lowest point in the regular season, and then, you know, now in the tournament. What does it say about Coach Keats and you as a coach, you know, seeing how he's been able to turn it around and, and get the team to really buy in you know, over these last eight games? Well, it's funny. Uh, you know, we actually spoke after uh, they won the ACC championship, and uh, I just reached out to congratulate him, and he called me, and uh, – I was just so impressed. Obviously, I said, I, I wish it didn't happen against us, but that was a big-time run you guys went on. And, uh, you know, he's done an amazing job. And, you know, I think you learn a lot about yourself, but also about your, your players, your team, and moments like that where your back is up against the wall. And clearly his guys will do anything for him. And uh, the way they've played, the way they've responded, um, the coaching job he's done is clear to me. Like, it's... Uh, a ton of respect for him, uh, and uh, he's got his guys playing the best basketball of the season, and that's what you want to do as a coach. If you can do that uh, in March, it uh, says a lot about you and, and the job that you've done, and he's clearly done that. We will take another question here in the room and then go to Zoom. So now on the left. Don Finale with the Duke Chronicle. Obviously, there's three ACC teams in the Elite Eight. Year after year, it seems like the ACC has success. Is there something unquantifiable about the ACC that maybe metrics overlook? Or what do you think the reason is that ACC teams seem to overperform year after year? I, um, I think it's, uh, I don't know as a league, I don't think as a league right now we've figured out how to do our non-conference schedule. You know, like that is, if you look at a couple different leagues, uh, they've been better with that. And ultimately, you can say it's not fair or whatever. You have to do what is going to qualify you for the tournament. And uh, that's something we need to get organized with and on the same page with the position we put ourselves in once we start playing each other. Uh, other leagues have less games against conference, their conference teams. We have 20 games. Uh, but so that's one thing. And then the second thing is I've always felt with the ACC, uh, the diversity of opponent that you see uh, prepares you to play anybody. And, uh, you know, we play up-tempo. Uh, we play some teams that are slower paced. You see physicality. You see athleticism. You see shooting. Uh, up until Syracuse this year, you always saw zone. You know, you still see some zone, but you always knew you would see that. You see switching uh, defense. Uh, so the styles, I think, is what helps prepare different teams. And so I think the success of you know having almost half the teams in the Elite Eight, three out of eight, last year, really every year the success, I think, is based on uh, playing different opponents through the ACC season. Let's go to Zoom. Okay, we have another question from Patrick. Patrick, please unmute yourself and uh, restate your name and affiliation, followed by your question, please. Hey, Coach. Uh, Patrick Waring from the NBS Sports Hour. Uh, I kind of wanted to 
go back to you when I asked the question to Jeremy. I heard you say we keep going back as far as the DMV. Um, can you kind of share a little bit just just what you see in players from the DMV? I mean, Jeremy, of course, is there now. Trevor was there. I mean, even if we went years back before, even before your time, you know, you had a guy named uh, Kenneth Blakeney that came from the area. But can you just kind of talk about the DMV? Yeah. Are you from the DMV by chance? I yeah. feel like you're. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's I, I respect that. And uh, look, the, the history of our program, you can go all the way back. You can go back to Johnny Dawkins and Tommy Amaker. You can go to, to Grant Hill, uh, Brian Davis, Nolan Smith. Um, Kenny Blakeney, uh, obviously most recently, uh, Quinn Cook, you know, Quinn would, you know, be so pissed at me if I didn't mention him. Uh, he's the ultimate DMV guy. Um, but we've had a great tradition of guys from that area. And, uh, you know, Jeremy spoke about it, but the level of competition, uh, how, how guys are battle tested, uh, that's always been something that's important for us. And most recently you have Jeremy, you have Trevor Keels, we have two guys signed, uh, Darren Harris, uh, Patrick Gongba, who are just terrific players. They've gone to PVI, which is one of the premier schools in the country, uh, playing for Team Takeover. So they see they're in big time moments. So by the time they get to us, uh, you know they're not afraid of competition. You know they're not afraid of the, uh, the spotlight or the moment, which is half the battle. And so, you know, we'll. Uh, We'll continue to recruit that area, and hopefully guys still see the picture and the vision at Duke. But uh, it's definitely been one of the best places for us uh, of anywhere. Okay, back in the interview room up front. Matt Giles, Blue Devil Country. Um, Coach, the, the first three games here in the NCAA tournament, the points allowed is very similar to 2010 and 2015, holding every opponent under 60. So the first part of this question is how does maybe this Duke defense stack up to those two or all-time great Duke defenses? And then I'm curious how often you use as an inspirational tool past Duke games, signature wins, like the UNLV game in 91. Is any of this required watching from your team or I mean do you require them to watch or learn some of this or is that healthy should they find their own identity yeah uh the to your first question about our defense you know I'm just proud of what we've done you know it's been uh you have to you have to guard the ball first and foremost and our perimeter I think has done a great job uh our back line has really moved well you know helping each other so that's been great to see and to hold our three opponents to well below their season average uh, it's what your defense needs to do in the tournament. It needs to be elevated. And I don't know where it compares right now to 2010 or 2015, but I do know uh, it's at the level that it needs to be to have a chance to win in these moments. And then each round you go, it needs to take another step up. And NC State is a heck of a challenge, and we need to do that. Um, and then I always bring up – personal experiences or past history of our program because I think it's important to understand the jersey that you're wearing, what it represents. You know, teams don't just play you for individually who you are. They play it for what Duke means and the success throughout the history of our program. Obviously, Coach K has taken it to a completely different level during his time. And um, so going into the tournament, I brought up my first experiences. You know, playing as a freshman in Buffalo against VCU. You know, I've brought up great moments, too, that I've seen, that I've watched. We just actually shared back there um, with the guys. My first memory was the 92 team and then 94, you know, which is you look at the history of our program, five national championships. Uh, it, can, it can easily be more off one play, and it can easily be less off of one play. And so just – using past moments uh, to understand the, the, the value of every possession, you know, like just being present in the moment. And uh, that's been something I'll always talk about as long as I'm the head coach here because I'm so proud of the history and you, you can't take for granted where you come from, what the guys before you have done uh, to put Duke in the position it's in now. I have about five minutes to go in this interview session. Let's go in the back, and then we will come up to the front. Hi, Coach. Vash Tyhert with Carolina Blitz. Leading up to, I guess, this 
entire NCAA tournament run, it seems as if Duke was kind of playing an underdog role. Even nationally, I people were picking JMU and then heading into Houston. Do you feel like your team has thrived in that in that space of underdog and maybe even proving doubters wrong? Yeah, I would. Uh I'd be lying to you if I said our guys don't see that or if we don't see that stuff, right? It's impossible not to hear anything or, or hear nothing. Um, so I think that's fuel to the fire for our guys and for our team. But at the same time, it's, it's been it's been a different kind of season, you know? Like, I mean, the preseason, you know, people are saying you can't lose and things like that. And then it, it's it's so hot and cold. It just it's incredibly hot and cold how it can be. And you just have to stay steady. You know, you just, you know, I tell our guys all the time, they probably get sick of me hearing it, but you're not as bad as people say you're, you're not as bad as people say you are right now after you lose. And I tell them after wins, you're not as good as people say you are. You know, you just have to be really steady. And so uh, I told them right before we found out where we're going, I said, look, you're going to hear predictions on air. People are going to say what's going to happen in our bracket. It literally does not matter. Uh, 2010, they said we'd be the first one seed out. We won the whole thing. Uh, last year, I think a lot of people picked us to win it, and uh, we lost early. Uh, I could go through each season. It's why nobody's ever had a perfect bracket. <laughs> There's lots of reasons, but uh, it's you can't predict. You have to focus on what you can control. And uh, so I don't know about what our, what, our, what our players would say, if they feel they're the underdog or not. Uh, but I do know they're proud, they're competitive. And so when people say they can't do something, I think that gets them more motivated uh, to prove people wrong, but also to do it for themselves so they, that they can win, they can accomplish what they want here. Closing question is now for Coach Shower up front. Coach, I was wondering what you might think of the some of the personalities of the of the women's coaches, including the men who coach the women. It seems like they're not quite as careful as maybe as some as the some of the men's coaches. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I I can't speak on that. I have no idea. I don't I don't pay attention to men's coaches and what they say. You know, so but uh, I don't know what you mean by that. But I can't I can't speak on that. Okay. Um, just a general, what, what do you think of uh, Caitlin Clark's deep shots and just her game in general? Yeah, Caitlin Clark is a killer. You know, she's <laughs> she's who I always want to be as a player, <laughs> you know, to shoot with range and, you know, not afraid of any moment. She's uh, off the charts. And as a coach, you want any of your players to have her competitive spirit. You know, her, her shooting and scoring is elite. Uh, in special, but to me, it's the, the heart that she plays with, the competitive spirit that separates her. And so, uh, you know, I've I've loved watching her play. They've had a terrific year. She's had a terrific career, and uh, she's been a joy to watch. Coach, I think we have one on the left inside aisle. Uh, yes, sir. Rob McLean from Inside Pack Sports. State runs seven players primarily, but they still find a way to kind of go two, three deep, one through five. And then, of course, Burns and Horn are the key guys, but the other five seem to find a way to contribute every game. How unique is this NC State team from a coaching perspective to look at, and how difficult is it to prepare for this version of what the Wolfpack are right now? Well, I, I think you have to start with they, they've, they've developed great role definition. And, uh, you know, Horn and Burns are as, they're a lethal combo, the two of them to score. But then the, the other guys do such a good job playing their role. And they have good size, good positional size. They have good versatility. And so they can go big if they need to. You know, Middlebrooks and Burns have played together. They can go small, you know, with Diara playing the five, which they haven't done, but they can if they need to. They can play four guards on the court. Uh, so, you know, like you mentioned, it's seven players primarily that play, but the versatility allows them to put a lot of different lineups on the court. And that's why I think it's challenging. No matter what, they can match down to you. They can match up. Uh, they can speed you up. Their athleticism. Uh, so it's. Uh, but but to me though, it's the role definition they've created and developed the last couple of weeks that has allowed for that to happen. 
Okay, our 40-minute window has concluded. Thanks, uh, right. Coach. Thank and, you. Thanks. And your, and your student-athletes for coming. We'll let you go to practice and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Good luck, thank Coach. You. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, we will begin with NC State at uh, 340.